So I uh, received some uh, questions uh, from uh, uh, Zinta, which were uh, translated. Um, so the first question is, is there anything people like us who can pray, etc., could do to help out the situation in the Ukraine? Ukraine, of course, has a bit of a, a history of moving borders. And uh, as a country, it hasn't existed for a, for a long time. Um, the modern Ukraine basically came into being after the uh, First World War and the uh, Russian uh, uh, November Revolution, the Communist Revolution against the Tsar. Mm. After the Ukraine was formed, uh, large parts of the Ukraine were uh, donated to, uh, to Russia. Um, the western part of the Ukraine used to be Romania and Poland and uh, the Crimea was given in 1954 by Russia to the Ukraine. So as far as territorial integrity goes there's been some shifting going on. So the people in the uh, western part of the Ukraine they feel much more um, yeah, in a way part of Western Europe because uh, Poland and Romania have now joined the European Union and the people in the more yeah, uh, eastern part they feel more Russian uh, because this is also much more their uh, ethnicity. Um, one of the things which uh, happened recently is that they elected the president who was a bit worse than usual. Um, the presidents, uh, of course, they, they always try to support um, their party, their group at the expense sometimes of other groups or even of the nation. And uh, in this case, they chose a president who was very uh, apparently kleptocratic. So he uh, started to steal everything yeah, uh, he could and he used the government and his power to get everything into uh, his own hands, his son's hand, his friend's hands. So it was a very kleptocratic regime. And as can be imagined, people are not always very happy with the kleptocratic regime because they've worked hard to build up their business. Um, and uh, yeah, when it's suddenly taken away at a whim, um, they really, really dislike it. So this is one reason for public uh, discontent. The other reason, as I said, is of course the ethnical division in the country. Um, third reason is basically the um, involvement of other nations. Um, so a student uprising with anti-government protests, as we have here has been organized before in Iran by uh, the US. Um, so uh, Western powers have been um, donating to anti-government groups, to so-called independent media, anti-government media. Um, so there is a lot of foreign influence in the Ukraine, which has also yeah, created an anti-pro-Russian yeah, president. Uh, mindset in a lot of people and led to demonstrations and ultimately the revolution. Um, if we look at this from a, uh, from a spiritual perspective, it's so far not that interesting. Um, because what we find is that uh, governments and other places of power, they always attract uh, darkness, lower forces, demonic entities, things like this. So if it is one government or another, it doesn't matter that much because governments tend to be yeah, kind of dark. Uh, sometimes they're more dark, sometimes they're less dark, but mm, it doesn't matter that much. Um, what uh, is more interesting uh, from an energetic uh, perspective is how things play out or who is behind things which are happening. Um, let me clarify this a bit. Uh, there are different groups of egregores. So some are very interested in um, a luciferical uh, kind of world where there's a lot of personal freedom for personal advancement. 
others are more interested in a satanic type of world where there is much more um, collectivity, other people are more interested in a Arimanic kind of world where there is much more of a uh, government oversight. And it is often um, these groups who combat each other and ultimately struggle for control over government. Um, if we look a little bit at um, what the mood was or, uh, in the Ukraine, um, before the president, uh, 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 yeah, the, the pro-Russian president came into power, um, there was a lot of enterprise. People were very interested in all the opportunities, so it was a kind of a, a luciferical impulse. And the luciferical impulse is also the dominant impulse in Western Europe and in the US. Um, and um, what happened is that it became much more arimanic. So it became much more uh, a dictatorship controlled by one person with yeah, desiring complete control. And now we get to the interesting play in a way between the agricores. Um, because there's a conflict between two ideologies. Should people be able to um, yeah, pursue their own happiness, develop their own ideas, or should people be guided and controlled by some higher power? Uh, in this case working through the government, if not being the government. And um, it's a very interesting play because from the outside you would see, gosh, there's a struggle between the population who wants to be much more uh, luciferical and there's, yeah, kind of the elite who wants to hold on to its power. Um, but if you look a little bit more uh, deeply, you find it's actually the uh, Aramanic side which is taking the, um, which really has the initiative here. Um, what we see happening is when the president loses power, uh, there he is not actually replaced by these luciferical powers which actually started the revolution. Uh, you would think like, gosh, now we're getting going to get free press, uh, free movement of money, of capital, uh, uh, stable laws which protect people so they can develop uh, themselves yeah, in relative safely, safety. But when the president is ousted, instead we see uh, a lot of uh, neo-fascists um, terrorizing uh, the Russian population. And quite soon it turns into chaos, and the chaos turns into martial law, and it turns into civil war. And ultimately the government has even more power, more control um, than it had before under the previous president. Uh, the other thing we notice is it's kind of like a, it's spreading um, because there's uncertainty, there's fear what is going to happen. So it is not just that in Ukraine itself that the population loses power in respect to the government. The same thing happens in the US, the same thing happens in Western Europe, the same thing happens in Eastern Europe. So because also in Russia people are looking to the president, to the government, to the army, to the Arimanic forces basically to save them, to take control. And the same thing is happening in Western Europe. People are looking to America to establish military bases, to put more and more control in and um, immediately they put in restrictions on trade, on freedom of press, they put in censorships, um, they put in uh, travel restrictions. So uh, what we see is basically that the whole situation in the Ukraine is an Arimanic coup against the luciferical impulse in America and in Western Europe. As to relying on higher forces to solve the situation, um, the situation is caused by higher forces. Uh, there are Arimanic egregores and of course the people connected to these egregores, which have created the civil war, um, also the foreign meddling, the foreign involvement, uh, so that the Arimanic impulse will be carried 
all over the world to other countries as well, instead of just remaining a very isolated impulse in the Ukraine itself. So higher forces are already very, very much involved. Um, the question, big question is of course like do we feel we should, could, we should get involved? And that depends very much on what side of the Aramanic Luciferic dispute you're on. Because if you are more luciferical in nature then you should probably try to resist this Aramanic coup. If you're Aramanic in nature, yay! But um, also a system, whether it is luciferic or Aramanic, doesn't make it dark or light. And that's actually the second issue which uh, comes to play here. So we can ask ourselves, is this an, a coup of, which is planned by the light side or by the dark side? And you may see, think, gosh, there's so much fear, destruction, pain and death. It has to be the dark side. Um, this is unfortunately not true. And this is also because of the perspective of these powers. Um, they are consisting of spirits, which are basically immortal. If the body dies, the spirit simply continues, it returns to the aggregate. So loss of life to them is inconsequential. Death, pain, suffering to them is also inconsequential because it is just something which happens to the body, which dies anyway. It is just like having a dream, having a fantasy, having a life. So to them, the fact that a change would yeah, require the sacrifice of life is not a deterrent. Um, what is ultimately um, helpful in finding out is it a light or a dark side coup is to see what happens to, um, to the people. Are people in a way um, being helped or is their spiritual advancement going more quickly or going more slowly? And usually if you see that yeah, in a way movement of people, movement of information is being uh, lessened and um, that in a way information is being denied to people. Um, that also usually either uh, skews their advancement or hampers their advancement. Because if you have a very imperfect image of the world, you also cannot learn how to deal with the world or how to grow or manifest or how to manifest yourself into this world if there is only lies and deception. And well, unfortunately with every war this is part of what is going on. Um, another thing you could do is to see a little bit um, of uh, what is behind the pivotal events. Um, so I've been studying this a little bit and um, one of the uh, ideas uh, which is floating around in the Ukrainian and Western press is that uh, all the so-called atrocities against the Russians are just lies or caused by uh, Russian uh, uh, provoca uh, provocation and that the Ukrainian people are basically innocent of these things. Um, fortunately, as spiritual people, we have another resource than just the press. Uh, we can talk to the victims, to the people who died, to find out what was going on, at least as far as they could know it. And the uh, people I spoke to, they were quite uh, shocked by the uh, violence of basically yeah, paramilitary groups who, who were yeah, brutally butchering them. Um, so if the story that it's not happening is completely false. It is happening. Russian people are being persecuted uh, in the Ukraine. They're being killed and tortured in the Ukraine. So then we come to the other part that um, is the uh, desire to uh, separate from uh, the Ukraine of the uh, Crimea and the people in the eastern Ukraine truly their desire or is this engineered by the um, Russian government? Now it gets interesting because depend as a result of the uh, 
atrocities you would think that the Russian people would like to secede. And I've looked at some of the people who started the secession movement and they seem to be much more um, in contact with the Moscow regime than with the local people in the uh, Donbass region. So there is, yeah, definitely Russian involvement. <coughs> so it can be that indeed Russia is trying to grab territory, but they are not responsible for the atrocities against the Russian people within the Ukraine. Then we hit another very interesting uh, event, which really creates a lot more uh, possibility to see what is going on. Namely, we get the uh, airliner crashing in the Donbass region. Well, of course, immediately the US says, we know what happened exactly, and da di da di da and they have a story all ready and prepared. And this is also what yeah, they've used before. Um, they like uh, pretending to be the victim to get public support. So they can pass laws and do things which otherwise the public would not like. So it's a very normal strategy for the Americans. Um, and if we look a little bit closer, we have to also see, okay, which Americans? Because um, it's a struggle about world domination ultimately. And what is happening in the Ukraine is just a, la a lever by which to change how people feel worldwide. And if only in, uh, in the Ukraine it would happen, it would not be very worthwhile. The e events would not be used in an optimal fashion. But by the plane crashing, all of Western Europe becomes very intimately involved. But of course, what is happening needs to be controlled, needs to be spinned correctly. And um, the Dutch government and the American government were quite ready and prepared to, um, to do this. So here we get to see a little bit more of a, of a plan, uh, of a preconceived plan how to uh, exploit the situation. And here, of course, we also have the possibility to try to talk with the people who died in the plane crash. But that becomes tricky, because um, when I and also one of my students tried to get in touch with them, we found out that we couldn't, because there was a basically a big barrier erected um, around the plane crash. So that, like, astrally, people could not get in and the spirits who died, most of them could not get out anymore. So the hunt for the uh, spirits was a little bit more tricky and also who put the barrier there and why. Um, the barrier was made in a very expert fashion. Um, so I felt very disinclined to inquire too deeply. Um, simply because the amount of power and preparation uh, would quickly overwhelm a yeah, lone crusader. <coughs> what um, was possible was to find a little bit the energetic fingerprints of the, um, the people who created the barrier. Um, there are living masters, both light masters and dark masters, uh, but there are relatively few. So you're talking about maybe hundreds or maybe thousands of people, but not millions on this planet. So um, <coughs> if you can find signatures of this magnitude, then you know that these people are relatively high up within and probably in league with one or several echo cores. And actually by seeing the energetic signatures, you can know a little bit what factions are involved in creating this barrier. And it was a very Arimanic barrier. Um, so that was more or less as expected. 
before because those powers are just the dominant powers in the region at the moment. Um, what was, was much more interesting is what was um, the, one of the purposes of the barrier, namely it was a necromantical barrier. It, uh, if a person dies, the spirit still contains a lot of life force, a lot of energy. And um, these energies of the recently deceased can be harnessed, they can be used. And in most of, yeah, uh, at least Western Europe, this art of necromancy has died out. But um, because uh, the Americas largely escaped a lot of the witch hunts, not all of it, um, a lot of the art of demonology and necromancy has been preserved there. Um, so if necromancy is happening, there is usually a fairly good chance that American humans are involved. So that led me to inquire a little bit to see, okay, where is this energy which is being yeah, uh, released by the, uh, by the victims of the plane crash going to? And it turned out to indeed be going to Washington DC. And from Washington DC it was redistributed to Western Europe, mainly the European Parliament. Um, so now the picture starts to become a little bit more clear. Um, one of the uh, great uses of this, uh, uh, of the power of the recently deceased, is also to permanently or temporarily uh, take their, their powers, their talents. So people in Washington DC, which is the seat of the American government and um, in the European Union, uh, the government of the European Union and of national governments were being given more power, more influence, more ability to change events within their sphere of influence. So we could see that in a way the <coughs> plane crash um, was a sacrifice and through this blood sacrifice the uh, yeah, the followers, the members of the cult were given more power, more influence and ultimately they serve the purposes, the cult itself serves the purposes of the egregore which is arimanic. But also to use these practices this is dark magic. So we now know that basically the coup and everything which is going on is being engineered by dark arimanic egregores. <coughs> now we come to the second part of the question. Is there anything people like us could do to help out the situation in the Ukraine? As an individual to get involved in um, yeah, in opposing an egregore is quite uh, is quite tricky um, because egregores tend to yeah have a lot of members have a lot of resources and if you yourself are not supported by an egregore um, it is usually a very very bad idea to try to take on an egregore it is like one person by himself going to invade a country. Uh, not very likely to succeed. <laughs> Quite suicidal. So, what you can do is to try to see what other egregores are doing. Egregores which are more, uh, more friendly to you. How are they reacting to it? How are they responding to it? What are their champions doing? Because ultimately it is a push to try to push like the sleeping sheep which wander around grazing the earth uh, into a, a dark aromatic mold. And how to free them from that mold? Who is working on that? What are the plans? And maybe you can be inspired to lead such an initiative. Um, but what's very difficult is that if the other person has the initiative, they create a movement of energy, they create a flow of energy. And um, 
by controlling the media, they create a, a flow which is dark aromatic in the media, in the people, and all these things tend to be self-reinforcing. So, um, if there is a threat and people feel that they should band together, and that people who are saying like, no, it's not true, or be against the government, is against them. So things tend to polarize. You're for them or against them. And most people just follow whatever is put in front of their noses. What is the strongest influence on them. And right now, because of their initiative, it's this dark aromatic thing. So most people will support the dark aromatic impulse. And until another impulse, in a way, supersedes this wave, um, that's the state which we will be in. So um, going against the wave can be done, but it requires a lot of strength. It is usually easier to ride the wave, just try not to get towed away yourself, but try to remain stable, float on the top of the wave, keep your focus on other things, so you're not dragged away. And then follow a counter wave or maneuver yourself and as many people as possible out of the current and into another current. So moving people into a more healthy energetic flow would be the best thing to do at the moment. Um, as to resolving the physical situation, the physical situation exists because it serves a purpose. And actually, since much of their goals have been met quite quickly, within a few months, um, in a way their push or their interest is slacking off. And probably, I'm not sure, but if it has no more purpose and people are not feeding it anymore from different egregores or from other impulses inspiring people to do things, Things tend to go into a kind of routine, they become stationary, they become repetitive because there's no new impulses. So if nothing is done, the situation will just stay as it is, but won't escalate very easily because there's no reason, there's no impulse for it to escalate. Um, not escalating is also not yet resolving. Um, because people who are in a kind of a flow, they become more and more part of that flow. So in a way, the people who are caught in that situation, they become more and more attuned to the egregores which create that situation. So very much the actors of the game, uh, which are the politicians, the militia groups, the neo-fascists, the freedom fighters, um, they all are used as pawns by these powers and the longer they stay pawns of these powers um, following the course or the direction which is being given to them by these powers the more part of this egregore dark harmonic egregore they will become so in a way what they think they're fighting uh, is actually uh, yeah, controlling them. So very similar to the situation we had with uh, baby Bush and Osama bin Laden, who were both part of the same egregore. So both the American government, who was so-called anti-terrorist, and Al-Qaeda and the terrorists, they're basically just the same egregore. Same group, trying to do the very same thing. And actually it's the very same thing as uh, is being done now, and it's also the very same group, or very similar group, also a dark Arimani group, which is yeah, creating this coup, this motion in the world. You may also ask them why is it so important to do these things? Why do we have the whole 2012 drama? Why are we now having the Ukraine crisis? Um, it is because this is a time of great opportunity. And people could develop very rapidly, a lot of positive changes could take place if people would have the freedom to do so. So people need to be distracted, people need to be in very low vibrations, in fear, in worries. People need to be thinking about physical problems, war, famine, 
insecurity, finances, rather than about the spiritual opportunities which exist in this well, short window of time. We still have about eight years left until the window closes and the planning is to fill all those eight years with crisis after crisis after crisis and after that it won't matter because we will have lost most of our opportunities to create a bridge between our world and higher civilizations to create inspiration from uh, to manifest the inspirations which we can receive from light egregores or from other solar systems um, so this is one of the also important counter moves we could do try to focus on what are we being distracted from and not allow ourselves to be distracted but try to promote these powers which are being pushed into the background by events such as in the Ukraine. Ah, yes, um, the time window. Um, you probably heard about the Mayan calendar and that's in a way it is the, the start of a new cycle. And the starts of new cycles are very uh, important because it is the time when people sow. It is basically um, uh, you sow, then after a long time you reap the fruits of what has been uh, sowed. And um, the new cycle is basically coinciding, or the, the, the cause, what makes it a new cycle, is that our solar system is receiving impulses from other solar systems. So now all the inspiration and seeds from all the other civilizations in our yeah, local cluster uh, fall on the earth and if they fall on good ground and are nurtured they can feed us and sustain us through the next cycle. And currently, most of that potential is being unused. About, I would guess, about 70% of all the impulses are simply unheard, unanswered, unsupported. So, um, it, the way it is looking now is that our next cycle, which is <coughs> for the next 26,000 years, there will be very little advancement very little spiritual impulse because we're not doing anything with the chances we're being given humanity is mm, passing up on all the new stuff we just want don't want any new spiritual seeds mm. <laughs> and <clears throat> um, this is very much about the position of, uh, you could say, the, the, our solar system's ranking. Um, there are certain uh, lower powers who would like to have a higher place to move into, to evolve into. So you could say like there's criminals who want to take over um, and take our solar system for theirs. Um, but usually after they've run it for a while, it well, becomes worse, it becomes just like the place they came from. But it's short-term thinking, which is just natural to people from, who have this more limited consciousness. So those groups are trying to colonize us. And there's other groups who basically feel that um, this solar system is theirs and they don't like outside interference because they're the dominant power and they would like to stay in control. So they like to keep other powers out. So these two forces put together are kind of like resisting the new impulses. As you may know, the whole 2012 thing was very much um, given a spin and a twist by the Americans who basically took the original story, hid it, buried it, make sure nobody listened to it and fed us their own little story. Um, their own little story is basically a Protestant myth which was invented quite late I believe in the 
18th century, late 18th century, by some Protestant woman who was um, having her own ideas about how God would save the world and that God would yeah, find his chosen people, take them off the earth and turn the earth into a hell for everybody who remained. Interesting fantasy. Of course, the more modern version involved UFOs and aliens coming to take us to other planets and to people ascending rather than being taken away by angels. But it's basically the same story. And of course, the purpose of the story is do nothing, obey. <laughs> Be a good little sheep, do nothing. And most people did. <laughs> um, what people should have been doing is to go to the source. Okay, where's this prophecy from? Mayas. Okay, let's try to talk with these ancient Mayas. <coughs> let's try to investigate the energies in their temples. Let's try to go and be in ancient Maya temples or holy places, which are attuned to these energy changes. But unfortunately, not many people do so, just a few. Um, Fortunately, the whole story that everything happens on one day or a period of three days is also completely false. It's a period of 26 years, in a way, with this peak in 2012. So it started 13 years before, in about 99, 98. You could start feeling the doors opening, the veils lifting. People who were spiritually aware could notice that the shift was taking place, that the earth was changing, that more other influences started coming in. And now the doors are starting to close. And yeah, in about 2025, they will be completely closed again. So we have some time left to pick up impulses and to do something with them, but it doesn't look like it is happening because humanity prefers to you know, follow the darker impulses and prefers to be trapped and not lead the solar system into a higher vibration. And this is because humanity is basically very idle, not doing anything to help themselves or the planet and rather worrying about other stuff. So yeah, all in all a little bit depressing uh, very sad, but yeah. okay. So the situation of the Ukraine is ultimately um, part of a much bigger scheme, of a much bigger plan. And to do something about that, I would, yeah, hope for people that they would try to contact some ancient Maya priests who actually made these predictions to find out what's really going on, that they would start traveling with their astral bodies to the sun and through their connection with the sun to other solar systems to see what impulses they're actually sending us or what they're trying yeah. to teach us. Um, maybe try to find some of the people who are from these other planets and who incarnated here and try to help them and support them in the new impulses they're trying to bring and seed onto the earth. Um, if you're more architecturally or landscape magically inclined, um, create antennas so that the current impulse is in a way anchored as a seed into the earth so that at a later time, over the next 26,000 years, connections can be made or portals can be opened so we don't lose this opportunity entirely. So those are things which we could do to help. Uh, not directly it's helping the situation in Ukraine, but at least it's helping the fate of humanity and the planet. 